Hi everyone, this is a new section, testing. As with most things, it's best to avoid making mistakes rather than correcting them afterwards. In this section, we'll cover proper multi-threading, mutexes, locks and threads. Now we move on to the first video of the section, proper multi-threading. In this video, we're going to take a look at deadlocks and data races. A deadlock is described pretty succinctly by its name. It occurs when two or more processes attempt to gain access to a resource which the other is holding, while the other thread is simultaneously waiting to gain access to a resource which it is holding. For example, thread 1 gains access to resource A. Then, thread 1 and 2 both want to gain access to resource B. Now, thread 2 wins and owns B, with thread 1 still waiting on B. Next, thread 2 wants to use A now and waits for access. Lastly, both thread 1 and 2 wait forever for a resource. In this situation, we assume that the thread will be able to gain access to each resource at some point, while the opposite is true, thanks to each thread holding onto a resource which the other thread needs. This makes it clear that two basic rules when it comes to preventing deadlocks are, try to never hold more than one lock at any time and release any held locks as soon as you can. We saw a real life example when we looked at the dispatcher demonstration code earlier. It involves two mutexes to safeguard access to two data structures. The mutexes here are the worker mutex and request mutex variables. We can clearly see how at no point do we hold onto a mutex before trying to obtain access to the other one. We explicitly lock the worker's mutex at the beginning of the method so that we can safely check whether the worker's data structure is empty or not. If it's not empty, we hand the new request to a worker. Then, as we are done with the worker's data structure, we release the mutex. At this point, we retain zero mutexes. Nothing too complex here, as we just use a single mutex. The interesting thing is in the else statement, for when there is no waiting worker, we need to obtain the second mutex. As we enter this scope, we retain one mutex. We could just attempt to obtain the request mutex and assume that it will work, yet this may deadlock for this simple reason. The accompanying function to the earlier preceding function we see also uses two mutexes. Worse, this function, that is, add worker, runs in a separate thread. In the functions as we see them here, however, both rules have been implemented successfully. We never hold more than one lock at a time, and we release any locks we hold as soon as we can. This can be seen in both else cases, where as we enter them, we first release any locks we do not need anymore. As in either case, we do not need to check respectively the workers or request data structures anymore. We can release the relevant lock before we do anything else. This results in visualization. It is of course possible that we may need to use data contained in two or more data structures or variables, data which is used by other threads simultaneously. It may be difficult to ensure that there is no chance of deadlock in the resulting code. Here, one may want to consider using temporary variables or similar. By locking the mutex, copying the relevant data, and immediately releasing the lock, there is no chance of deadlock with that mutex. Even if one has to write back results to the data structure, this can be done in a separate action. This adds two more rules in preventing deadlocks. Never hold a lock any longer than is absolutely necessary. When holding multiple locks, mind their order. We now shift our focus to data races. A data race, also known as a data condition, occurs when two or more threads attempt to write to the same shared memory simultaneously. As a result, the state of the shared memory during and at the end of the sequence of instructions executed by each thread is by definition non-deterministic. Let's see the lock file that we had obtained in section 1. Data races are reported quite often by tools used to debug multi-threaded applications. For example, you can take a look at this highlighted lock file. The code which generated these warnings can be found in dispatcher.cpp. The stop function generates these warnings. 
Now, consider this code in the worker instance, the stop function where we set running value to false. We also define this code. Here, running is a Boolean variable that is being set to false, signalling the worker thread that it should terminate its waiting loop, where reading the Boolean variable is done in a different process, the main thread versus the worker thread. This particular example's warning is due to a Boolean variable being simultaneously written and read. Naturally, the reason why this specific situation is safe has to do with atomics. The reason why even an operation like this is potentially risky is because the reading operation may occur while the variable is still in the process of being updated. In the case of, for example, a 32-bit integer, depending on the hardware architecture, updating this variable might be done in one operation or multiple. In the latter case, the reading operation might read an intermediate value with unpredictable results. A more comical situation occurs when multiple threads write to a standard without using, for example, C out. As this stream is not thread safe, the resulting output stream will contain bits and pieces of the input streams from whenever either of the threads got the chance to write. The basic rules to prevent data races thus are never write to an unlocked, non-atomic, shared resource. Never read from an unlocked, non-atomic, shared resource. This essentially means that any write or read has to be thread safe. With this, we come to the end of proper multithreading.